Well, Singapore has launched its first aerial robotics arena, the first of its kind in the region as well. It's right in the heart of a no-fly zone. That's right. But as Geraldine Yap finds out, a little netting and some inside-the-box thinking, well, it goes a long way. Geraldine Yap with more. It's all systems go, and we have liftoff at the new aerial arena at SUTD, the Singapore University of Technology and Design. The school is within one of Singapore's many no-fly zones due to its proximity to Changi Airport. And flying this drone here should have been impossible or even illegal. But by throwing a huge net over the spacious four-storey courtyard, this has created a new convenient and accessible cage to train, test, showcase, or even show off aerial robotics technologies. The arena is funded by the National Robotics Program and will be opened to scientists, students, as well as industry players. Drones flying here is heavily regulated and it's actually without a proper permit, you cannot fly. But once with this netting, and as we show that the drones that fly here can be safe and will never be able to exit or escape this netting. It's actually as good as flying in an indoor space. And flying in an indoor space is allowed within these areas. Speaking at the launch of the arena, Manpower Minister Tan Si Ling called on the public and private sectors to work together to develop robotic solutions for real-world use, not just to enhance productivity, but also to address safety. I want to set a challenge to our NRP colleagues here. Get the drones with such solid AI algorithm with analytics that we can use the drones to supervise worksite safety. As Manpower Minister, trust me, we will get NRF to fund some of these projects to co-develop that with you, to make sure that at some of the work sites itself, your drones can take over the, 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 the functions of site supervisors, safety supervisors. A deal was also signed between SUTD, local startup spin-off robotics and gardens by the bay, to develop aerial robots that could help reduce the need for staff working at heights. This can be commercialised for use in the landscape, cleaning and built environment sectors. And joining us tonight to discuss the rise of the robots, Professor Kwek Tong Boon, he's Chief Executive of the National Robotics Programme, okay. and Professor Mohan Rajesh Elara, Provost Chair, Professor at the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with you, Professor Kwek. Now, we just so casually it's mentioned, right? A deal signed between the Singapore University of Technology and Design, a startup company, and Gardens by the Bay. But for such deals to be signed at all, you need a thriving ecosystem. Sure. Where are we on that in Singapore? Professor Kwek. Well, let me start with what the National Robotics Programme is all about. Uh, the programme was created about six years ago. One of our objectives is to build uh, what we call differentiating capabilities. These are capabilities that allow Singapore to maybe compete in the world, capabilities that can create social economic impact uh, for Singapore. And we hope that eventually they go beyond Singapore to solve uh, problems uh, beyond Singapore. So over the last six years, we have uh, funded more than 40 projects. Mm -hmm. So what you've seen is an example of one of the 40 projects that we have funded. And this particular one is quite interesting in the sense that uh, even though most of the projects that we have funded are mainly uh, robotics that move around in the ground, uh, or even climb staircase, this one uh, is interesting in the sense that part of it is on the ground, part of it is in the air. Okay? So it's a very unique drone. So obviously, uh, it's one of these differentiating capabilities that I mentioned about just now. And then uh, the developer, in this case, they came from the uh, SUTD. Once they mature the technology to a stage, they're able to have a prototype and then uh, demonstrate it to a potential user, potential adopters. And one of those, uh, what they call use cases, happen to come from the gardens by the bay, you know. So they have done already some preliminary demonstration and obviously the gardens by the bay, they're quite excited by it. That's the reason why they think there's potential for us, uh, for them to use this particular technology. So that is the drone, the, the very special drone. Then there's these facilities that we're talking about, as you mentioned in the program just now. It's a very interesting facility because of airspace constraint. So now by uh, having a facility to allow us to test drone, 
uh, without having to worry about the, the, the constraint imposed by our airspace, it allows our drone developer now to test not only this particular drone, but a lot of other flying objects, of even flying objects working with uh, mm. ground <laughs> objects, for example. I hope I'm not confusing you. But. Yeah, it, we expect robots to move, don't we? Yes. But Prof Mohan, uh, let's bring you in on the conversation now. And to do that, I have to get off my seat and actually walk over to you. Uh, you've brought in two, I would say, individuals here that don't look anything like the Terminator or like Robocop. If you're as old as me, you'll know who Robocop is. But they are, in fact, robots. Tell us something about Dragonfly. And this is Wasp? Wasp, yes. Okay. So at SUTD, uh, catalyzed by National Robotics Program, we are developing an emerging class of reconfigurable robots. These are transforming robots, like uh, the Bumblebee and Optimus Prime from the movie Transformer. But the robots don't go for battle, but help with dull, dirty, and dangerous job. So we have over 10 robots that we are developing. What you see here is two robots. Uh, first, let me introduce Dragonfly. So Dragonfly is a mosquito-catching robot. So it has attractants on board, five layer attractants, pheromone, UV light, thermal texture, visual, motion to attract. So it moves around in large places, attract mosquito, trap them in a glue trap, and even provide mosquito count, quantifying and making the work process an evidence-based one. How many mosquitoes can Dragonfly actually catch? The highest it has caught was 57 mosquitoes. 57 in an hour? In an oh, hour. Okay, that's not yes. bad. <laughs> Not yes. bad at all. And, and what about WASP? Yes, WASP. So WASP is, the purpose of WASP is for deployment in hospitals. Typically in hospitals, they are using a number of logistic robots, small robots for small material handling and large robot for large material handling. Yeah. And this gives rise to a number of different type of logistic robots. And what are the issues with that? With that, there is dedicated charging bay needed for every robot training manual for every robot, and again, operators has to understand these robots. So here we have a Lego type robot, where you can simply put the robots together um, to expand the capacity. So what our audience are looking at now, our viewers can actually, see, they think it's one, but it's two robots that have been sort of put, put together, is that right? Yes, so now you see two okay. WASP robots that are connected together, and, they're act, and they act as a single species, increasing the capacity, the surface area, the volume, and the payload. Each of these WASP can carry up to 400 kilos. By having two robots together, the capacity is increased to 800 kilos. And they act as a single entity, moving from one place to another. Right, it's a fascinating development, Wei Su. Hi, Professor Quick. Uh, now, you are co chief executive of the National Robotics Program. I take it you would likely have to decide, for example, uh, with that mosquito-catching creature there, uh, whether or not you would fund the development of something like that. Now, Professor Mohan was saying it catches 57 mosquitoes in an hour. That doesn't sound like a great many to me, all right? You put a lot of money into making that when, in principle, you could employ two slaves to kill mosquitoes for mm -hmm. you. Okay. So when you decide whether or not you would like to put money, time, resources into something like that, how do you make that decision? Well, that's not exactly how it works. Because when we talk about funding capabilities, what you want is to fund capabilities that uh, it may have been driven by a particular single use case, but we want to keep this capability to be able to, to be, have multi-use, multi-purpose uh, eventually, you know, to be used in other industry, other domains, or other applications. So what we have seen, what the Mohan spoke about actually is one of the spin-off that came out of one single capability that we funded. And he has spun off on that about 10. So uh, what was that capability very quickly? Well, we call it a reconfigurable, reconfigurable robotics. Okay? Okay. So the, the, the idea is to have a class of robot that, uh, that are able to change shape uh, depending on the environment. So essentially, what was the prototype, the original thing that became one of the iterations was the mosquito catcher very quickly? So he has come up with a, a uh, Mohan's group has come up with a uh, set of solutions that allows them to mechanically, electronically, and software just change the shape and so on. So the, this wasn't the first product. The first okay. product was actually one that allows us to do cleaning. You are familiar with Roomba, right? Okay. So Roomba yeah. is a fixed shape. So what he has done is to come up with a very versatile, very adaptable, okay. very flexible uh, Roomba based on the Tetris. Principle. Okay. So as to allow you to clean little corners, nooks and corners here and there, the same okay. technology, then uh, he used it to derive other applications, okay. 
like what you saw here, the two applications. Uh, what you have seen is the, the uh, uh, mosquito catcher. He has also uh, uh, um, developed robots uh, to look for rodents, for okay. example, develop robots to uh, chase away birds. Okay. You know, some such application. No? Yeah, I, I mean, we, you don't realize it, but actually in Singapore, we, there are robots yeah. all, all around us. I mean, we measure this by, pop, uh, by robotic density, okay. right, in terms of per capita, how many robots there are uh, in, uh, among the population. And apparently Singapore has one of the highest rates yeah. of, of, of robot density. Yeah. Tell us something about yeah, that. So Singapore is, in fact, uh, 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 is a country with uh, the largest number of uh, robots per capita. Uh, and this is combination of industrial robots and service robots. So yeah, we so see also more and more service Right, so it's robots. not just the automation that you see in industry, but we're talking about even if you go to the National Gallery and you're sort of walked around uh, by a robot, there is one there that can sort of tell you about the exhibits and so on. That's robotic technology as well. Yes, so we see more and more service robots now entering the market beyond the, the traditional industrial robots. We now see robots like the LionSpot uh, deploying their cleaning robots all around uh, Singapore and, and many other robots for surveillance, uh, security, logistic uh, missions and, and beyond. So we see robots now moving into the social spaces, right. performing everyday jobs, but while um, interacting with people. All right, uh, back to you, Professor Quack. Uh, uh, we saw the manpower minister saying here, uh, I'll lay down this challenge for you. Uh, develop robotic solutions for real world use. In fact, you are sure. already doing that. You've already very met that so, challenge. Very much so, yes. Uh, so one of the, our strategy is to uh, talk to potential adopters. Uh, so in our case, we started with uh, potential adopters from, the health, uh, from three domains, public sector domains, uh, healthcare domain, and then the uh, built environment domain, construction and so on, and then the environmental services. Mohan's work was mainly for the third category, environmental services. Yeah. So, so we're very use case inspired, use case driven. Oh, thanks yeah. so much for discussing all things robotic with us this evening. We're speaking with Professor Kwek Tong Boon, Chief Executive of the National Robotics Program, and of Thank course, you. Professor Mohan Rajesh Elara, Provost Chair, Professor at the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.